What is the Society Transformation Program about? It transforms society by redesigning public systems. Now, what do we mean by public systems? There could be a public function, like the education function, or uh, social welfare, or healthcare function. It could be an industry supply chain, the energy supply chain, nutrition supply chain. And it can be public-private partnerships. And how does it transform uh, these public systems? It transforms them, of course, for efficiency. I mean, all supply chain stuff is about increasing efficiency. But more importantly, it transforms uh, those systems for sustainability in terms of planetary resources, in terms of the limits, and it transforms them that they serve all stakeholders. Because most of the public systems, and we have heard a lot of this this morning, is self-serving in terms of the organization. They actually don't serve a larger society or life in general and the planet. This is the framework for the supply chain. And the supply chain framework guides the redesign of the containing supply chain as a coherent and sustainable whole. And of course also the redesign of each of the links in the supply chain. Let us look now at a case study like uh, the value chain of the electricity industry. The framework of the program allows us to look at issues at different levels. For example, we can look at issues at the overarching level, like how much electricity is generated and consumed. We can also look at the next broad level, for example, how much electricity is generated from renewable and how much from non-renewable resources and uh, what are some of the issues around that. Or we can dig increasingly deeper into the sub and sub systems or sub and sub industries as this particular figure shows. This detailed figure also illustrates our current economic paradigm, which is a bottom-up one. Our economic theories are based on the collective belief that the sum total of efficient decisions made by individual economic actors or the organizations in the various sub-industries will add up to a desirable whole that benefits all stakeholders. Unfortunately, this is not true. The current emergence from efficient and effective decision-making by individual economic actors is an unsustainable larger whole that, in the case of uh, energy, co-produces climate change and environmental deterioration, amongst others. The same bottom-up undesirable emergence is true for other public systems also, be the, the finance system, nutrition chain, water, transport system, education or healthcare, to name but a few. The biggest problem with unsustainability is not that the individual economic actors are unsustainable, but that the interaction between them creates unsustainable industries and public institutions. For example, in the context of electricity, a key problem lies on the interface between the renewable and the non-renewable energy generators and the distribution net, which taps their output. Let me explain. We know that economic renewable energy solutions exist, yet they do not seem to make a large enough impact on creating a more sustainable world. Why is that so? The problem with renewables like solar and wind generation, for example, is that their supply is unreliable and erratic. When the wind blows and the sun shines, they produce, otherwise not. To increase their contribution to the overall uh, energy supply would need complementary solutions. 
Either they would, we would need effective and economic storage solutions or we require complementary producers that kick in when there is no sun and wind. An example would be the biogas generators, but these have other problems. They are costly and their impact on agriculture can be devastating. If we look at the non-renewables like nuclear and coal, for example, they are generating energy continuously and cover most of the supply to the net in an efficient and relatively economic manner. Because they are steadily contributing to the supply, there's actually no room for the renewables to contribute their erratic supply. Other emergence related industry problems arise from poorly planned, even if well-meaning, top-down interventions. An interesting example comes from Germany. In a knee-jerk post-Fukushima reaction, the German government decided to transform the energy sector towards becoming more renewable, the so-called German Energiewende or German energy transformation. On the one hand, they announced plans to close down the nuclear power stations. On the other, they encouraged more renewable energy generation. One way was to subsidize the solar generators by guaranteeing them preferential access to the distribution networks. As a result, the solar park and solar panel industry boomed. Unfortunately, the increase in electricity generated from solar led to reduced earnings uh, of the coal industry, which could not sell all their electricity to the net. So the coal industry began to lobby for limiting the preferential access of the solar industry. Consequently, no new solar parks were built and overnight the solar panel industry collapsed and is now bought up by the Chinese to get the German IP. Similar poorly planned government interventions can also be observed in other industries. An example is uh, the deregulation of the finance industry in the 1990s, which led to a major finance crisis and the various bailouts of the banking sector. And more recently, we have a partial re-regulating of the industry, whereby it is questionable if it is thoroughly enough planned. What is to be done? From a system thinking perspective, the answer is that practically all industries and public institutions need to be redesigned. Looking at the energy and Agivende again, it has the following ambitious goals, namely 50% renewable energy by 2050 compared to 16% in 2012. Can this be really achieved? Current German strategic documents and commentators express doubt about it, nor is it at all clear how it could be achieved. System thinking suggests the need for collective industry redesign, whereby the various sub-industries along a supply chain, as well as other stakeholders, need to co-design their containing system and then change their own system in accordance with that design. The Biometric Societal Transformation Program provides this skeleton within which the function-specific contributions of each sub-industry can be collected. We even have an online methodology for problem analysis and brainstorming, the Biometrics Jam. The program also contributes the skeleton of organizing principles that guide the ideal designs. As illustrated by this figure, once an industry is redesigned, in other words, the aims in terms of the desired outcomes and the key strategies have been determined, the industry aim is cascaded into each sub-industry and their associated organizations, 
who then change their own business operations accordingly. For example, in the case of the coal industry, the industry ideal of growing renewable energy provision could imply a change in the business model from being a continuous energy provider to becoming a complementary energy provider to the renewable industry. In other words, the coal industry would step up or down energy generation depending on the supply from the renewable generators. Existing coal power stations cannot make this transition because the technology doesn't allow it. However, new power stations can embrace this business model quite profitably because the technologies exist. In South Africa, there are at least two mega coal power stations planned. If the business model of these new power stations is continuous energy generation, the solar industry will be marginalized for another 30 to 40 years. So the question is, who will force the coal power stations to make the decision to embrace a new business model? unless a comprehensive industry transformation plan would guide this. And then who will facilitate such an industry redesign? My question is, is that not a core function of government?